Hello everybody. Welcome back again in our next session. In this session we are going to talk about uh, developing an incremental dynamic analysis IDA for 2D RC frame structures using SAP 2000 and ETABS. When I say incremental dynamic analysis means we need to use a non-linear dynamic analysis. In the previous session we talked about the static analysis. So what is the incremental dynamic analysis? Incremental dynamic analysis is applied, is usually applied to investigate the expected structural response. And also it helps to know the deterioration or the devastation or the vulnerability of the structure. And also it could help to know the financial losses and the economical losses under earthquakes under different intensities so incremental dynamic analysis you can consider it as the most exact method compared to the static analysis as we say it could help to investigate the expected structural response the deterioration the financial loss losses under different earthquake intensity in order to develop this incremental dynamic analysis you should know the nonlinear time history analysis as the nonlinear, as you know, the nonlinear static analysis, we develop pushover curve, right? In the nonlinear dynamic analysis, we need to develop the incremental dynamic analysis curve, IDA curve. So we have POA curve in the static, and we have IDA curve in the dynamic. In the dynamic, we have time history analysis. You know, the ground motion or the earthquake. It is a relation or it's a function of time, time in seconds or in minutes. Versus, versus the intensity measure. So the time history analysis give more realistic results about the performance of a particular type of structure under seismic excitations. And there are several researchers among the world. They they use this method. They use to develop the IDA curve, which is a relation. The IDA curve, as you know, it is a relation, right? Between like the pushover, the pushover curve was a relation between the base shear and uh, base shear and the drift. However, in the incremental dynamic analysis, it is a relation also between the drift and the intensity measure. So this is a developing, this is the concept or this is the definition of incremental dynamic analysis. So if you go back, so I want to, to share with you some articles that talk about uh, the the analysis screen if I want to go to this one okay this one. I'll go to my Google Scholar. Okay, my profile. This is my Google Scholar articles. If you go to this paper on the quantification of collapsed margin of retrofit retrofitted university building in Beirut using probabilistic approach, click on this paper, view the PDF. You will see go to this this paper will help you to know also this is using etabs okay here's a div yeah you can see in section 2.3 this is a definition of the dynamic analysis this will help you implement the it's applied to this case to back structural response and according to nazri the most common used parameters is peak ground acceleration as intensity measure the IDA curve can be developed based on a relationship between the interstory drift ratio and the intensity ground motion PGA, as it proposed by several seismic codes that recommend minimum of three or seven sets of ground motion. So in order to develop this method, in order to develop the IDA curve, you need minimum three or seven sets of ground motions. So so our, in this paper, you can see that I use three sets of ground motion for each model. 
you, uh, selected from the Pacific Earthquake Engineering Research Center peer website. So this is this is this paper could help you to understood understand sorry the, the nonlinear dynamic analysis and the incremental dynamic analysis. Scale. Also, if you want to go to revise the nonlinear static analysis, also here a uh, good article to understand the nonlinear static analysis. Okay, this is one of the paper. This paper also help you the seismic current assessment methodologies. This is a review article. This could help you also to read about the incremental dynamic analysis and the static analysis. This paper uh, through the sections. Yeah, you see? This section is analytical assessment approach, section three, it will help you to understand also the two methods, non static analysis versus push over analysis. And here, the non linear time history analysis is incremental. Non linear, non -linear time history is the most exact method, precise method to assess the seismic performance of the structure, which is recently computational method were in rapid development and the incremental analysis has improved, extended of non linear time history, method, etc. So, also, this article will help you to know the definitions and the applications of uh, the uh, non linear time history analysis. And the nonlinear dynamic analysis, the nonlinear static analysis as well, push over curve, incremental dynamic curves. Okay, so let's go back to our previous model. Our previous model, this one. This model, just to quick review about this model. This model, we have it one, two, three, four, five, five story levels, and we have three bays. The the bays. Uh, distance or span is like uh, here x equal minus 2 x equal 2 so 4 meter bay distance and the height is 3.2 meter so just as a quick uh, quick view if I want to know the section of this column right click we, we select column 40 by 40 and and the beams 40 by 30 as a drop beam so in this case, uh, we know, okay, so now in 3D, I want to see this in 3D. So this is a frame that we have developed before to do, using pushover analysis. Okay, so now, it's time to know how to insert or how to apply the nonlinear time history analysis, the ground motions, right? But before, let me remember again, define the material. We have material is 25 megapascal, no issues. We have the section, frame sections, we have beams and column. What else we have? We have hinges, of course, we need to define hinges. We have column and beam hinges. If we click right to click here, we'll see hinge name and hinge name. We have hinge at distance 0 0.1. We have the second hinge is at distance 0 0.9. So we have two hinges on the beam, which is correct. On the columns again, right to click. We have nonlinear hinges here 0 0.1, and we have nonlinear hinges is 0 0.9. So for the hinges also defined. Uh, let's go to the load pattern. This one loads the load on the beam. We have 15 kilonewton per meter run for the superimposed that load, and we have uh, 20 kilonewton per meter run for the live load. Okay. Okay, and uh, the boundary condition is fixed. Rx, Uy, Uz, Rx, Ry, Rz have restrained. We have the diaphragm here, constraint diaphragm, diaphragm five. Each joint should be have a diaphragm. So the same same procedure that we did in the pushover, in the nonlinear static analysis, the same way we need to, we you should model for the incremental dynamic analysis. Okay. 
define now we need to define let's show, okay show cases these are the cases that use for the push over the previous session okay for for our for today we need to define the time history and define functions go to time history you have several options here you can use from file you can use response spectrum ram so two sign triangular sign user or periodic now of course we go to from file click add a new functions okay when you click add new function you will see this is this window and we need to insert the ground motion here browse click on browse by default the, the, the computer and structures or csi software they put time history functions like as an artificial artificial ground motions okay you will see from the artificial ground motions here like a text file read for example the first name is altadina altadina one means the ground motion in x direction altadina two means the ground motion in two in y direction altadina z means the ground motion is vertically so you need you should select one of this of this ground motions or two or three the minimum is three or seven okay so in this case we we'll, let's see let's use hol holisty one time history which is in x direction see it is not clear click if you file we have this file this file is about on data and and data entry for the ground motions the intensity is here you should read this one holister south street and pine drive we have 3000 points these points this these numbers is about 3000 points of acceleration data equal space 0 0.02 so between each value is 0 0.02 seconds and the unit is centimeter per second square centimeter per second square we need it in meter per second square in pj okay so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight values per line. We have one, two, three, four value to skip, four line to skip. So we have four line to skip and we have eight values per line. So go here, header skipper four, and this one eight, and click this big graph. See, now you have the ground motions, which is a function between the time and the intensity measure the intensity measure here is centimeter per second square okay so also you need to check this the values at equal interval remember in the file they mentioned 0 0.02 second so this one should be 0 0.02 second okay okay so now we have it is around around 59 seconds 59 seconds okay so the time here for the ground mission the ground motion is 59 seconds so remember in the file they say 3000 points okay we have 3000 points so if you go to open calculator here this is 3000 points divide by 0 0.02 the time interval sorry uh, this is 0 0.02 times 3000 you will get 60 seconds so you know from the points and the time interval the, uh, the the period of the ground motions so that's why here it goes it's around 60 seconds as you can see here it is 59 almost 60 seconds so you can understand from the time from the number of points from the time interval how how long this earthquake could take so change the name i will take it like ground motion one okay this is ground motion one again if you want to define another ground motion browse can go to 
go to this one, Petrolia, view file, we have one, two, three, same. So, and 0.02, 3000, and 0 0.02. So you can skip here four, go to here eight, change this to 0 0.02, let's build the graph, okay? This is a graph, this is the ground motions for the uh, ground motion two, also 60 seconds here. So you can name this ground motion. motion two okay so let's remove this i don't need this so we have two functions here two ground motions again if you go to ground motion three the same way let's take uh, randomly like this one focus on the x direction don't use the z direction okay you file one, two, three, four, same. Four by eight by zero point zero two. So the graph, so this is the ground motion. Okay, so this is the ground motion three. So we have to select minimum three ground motions. One, two, three. Okay. So this is the way how to to uh, define the ground motions uh, using sub two thousand. But also, or most of the researchers uh, use not by default the ground motions that use in the the software itself because they have different specifications of the buildings. For example, I need to. I need to insert a ground motion based on specific soil type, based on specific uh, 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 for us, uh, type of magnitude, different type of intensity measures. Uh, is it far field or near field ground motions? There's a lot of characteristics to select the ground motions. Again, based on the paper that I mentioned, you can read and you can understand what uh, what are how to select the ground motions. Okay. From this paper, you can read. From other papers, you can read. So there's a there's a website. Call it Peer, okay. Peer, this is a Pacific Earthquake Engineering Research Center. Okay, from this database, from the Peer Ground Motion database, you can download. You should have account. You should have account. Uh, let me try to open this. Okay, you should have account. Make, like here, make sign up and make account. So we come to the peer ground motion database. We have west and east. Let's go to the west and click submit processing. So now you can see we have different records of characteristics, the RSN, the number of the, of the selected ground motion, the event name, the fault type you need strike, normal, reverse, normal plus reverse, magnitude, for example, you need to five, between five to seven. RJB means the distance from the from the structure to the source of the earthquake. For example, I need it between five to, to 40 kilometer. This is the shear wave velocity based on the soil type that you have. For example, I need to go to 270, 240. And the pulse, you need only pulse record or no pulse record, any record, no problem. And go and search. Search was successfully created. So if you scroll down, you will see You'll see the events of earthquakes. This one, first earthquake, you have the name of the event is Parkfield. It happened in 1966. The station called Shulam Shandon Air Array number 12. We have magnitude 6.19, Richter scale. 
The type of mechanism is strike slip. The fall distance 17.64 kilometer. The shear wave velocity based on all our recommendations is based on the type of soil 408. So, and the name is park field. We have two types of files. You have acceleration one, file H1 means in X direction. We have H2 means in, in Y direction. And you will have the vertical directions. So these are the earthquakes in Italy. You can see in Livermore, in uh, Little Creek, Mammoth Lakes, Parkfield, San Fernando, Taiwan, Mexico. So these are the characteristics that you need to, to uh, download the ground motion from the Pacific Earthquake Engineering Research Center. So you can go here and download. Click on this, download the time series metadata. Okay. Click OK. And the download it will start. See, you can download the files. I will I will pause this because I want to show you here. Okay, so this is the ground motions. See, we have a lot of ground motions. 180 and means in x direction 270 means in y direction etc so this is the ground motion that you use okay so from this ground motion for example i will take one let me try to take one uh, take this one rsn and go to sap 2000 again define function time history from file add a new function go browse desktop we have something called rsn right from the rsn view file i have the peer database this is called helena montana it's happened on 31st of october 1935 uh, number of records number of points 5993 0.01 so this is the data that we have so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So almost we have ten points per line. And we need to skip one, two, three, four line header. So four by ten. Oh, sorry. Display graph. Here. Why? One. Two, three, four. Yes, we skip four. Or we skip five. Zero point zero one. So this is the ground motion. This is the ground motion. So this is the ground motion is like cathode ground motions. And you name this ground motion before. So this is the way how to define. Let's take another one. Let's take another one. For example, take OK. Let's take like uh, this imperial valley, the central. Let's take this one. Period Valley, etc. Go to 7000 again. 
I will find function type history from file add new functions add browse we have this one view file view file we have one two three four to skip we have one two three four five per line and zero point zero one change this to zero point zero one Changes to four, changes to five, split the graph. See, this is ground motions, is imperial value, like the name is the ground motion five. Okay, so we have here around 52 or 53 seconds with this ground motion five. I click OK. So, this is the way how to define the ground motion, how to extract the ground motion from the software itself, or how to extract the ground motion from uh, the peer database, Pacific Earthquake Engine Research Center database. Okay, now I'm going to define load cases. Add a new case. The new case is nonlinear, right? Go to changes to time history. And go to change acceleration. U1, U1 means in X direction, U2, and select one of the ground motion. I will go out to select the imperial ground motion. This one is central. And we have the scale factor. The scale factor is the ground acceleration factor. The ground acceleration is known as G, right? So, as G, so if I want to show you G equal gravitational acceleration right so it will be 9.81 meter per second square right so this is the scale factor so so the scale factor scale factor as you want is is the intensity measure incremental increase So you need to start with 0.1 g. 0.1 g equal how much? 0.1 times 9.80 millimeter per second square, right? And it will be 9.81 millimeter per second square because our unit in the gravitational acceleration is is a millimeter. So you start analysis for 0.1 g. Then 0.2 g. Then 0.3 g. Then 0.4 G, then 0.5 G, etc. Until uh, it collapses, or based on what what study, what is the target, or based on your target of your of the study. Okay, so this is the way of scale factor. So 0.1 G, 0.2 G, 0.3 G, incrementally increasing the intensity measure. And from each intensity measure, you will know the damage measure. Okay? Okay. Let me explain this. Okay, so the scale factor is intensity measure. Okay? From the, the intensity measure, you will get damage measure. Call DM. Or engineering demand parameter EDP it is known as EDP so we have damage measure we have engineering demand parameter okay so the damage measure can be so a 0.1 G intensity measure you will get a damage measure what is the damage measure that I use? I use the displacement, for example, or the drift, the displacement. I get, for example, 20 millimeter displacement. Okay, so you have 0.1 G, you get 20 millimeter sway or drift displacement. Continue, at 0.2 G, you will get, for example, is 70, 67 millimeter. At, zero point, at 1 G, you will get 179 millimeter. So, this is the, the relation. The relation is 
starting incrementally the intensity measure from 0.1 G and getting the damage measure, for example, is 20 mm, and, and redo again 0.2 G that get the damage measure until you start incrementally increasing until you reach your target or until you know the building is will be collapsed at X value. So this is the intensity measure. This is how you can uh, know the study or how to develop the incremental analysis of course. Okay, so here we'll start with okay. We will start with 0.1g, 0.1g multiplied by 9810 equal 981 at. Okay, we can use dark integration method, which is more more accurate, or you can use a model. I use dark integration, but dark integration will take too too much time, computation efforts. Maybe it will take one days, 15 hours, 10 hours. 30 minutes, one depends on your performance of this PC, depends on how the structure is complicated, and so on. So, the number of output time steps. <coughs> okay, how to know this number of output time steps? Okay, go back, click OK, go back to find, find function, time history. This is gamma 5, modify, view file. You can see here number of points, 5372. And here's your point zero five three seven two. Remember this. Okay, define function time history. Not define both cases. A case one modify five seven three two. This is yeah, this one zero point zero. And you will name this zero point one g. Because at zero point one g, we're going to modify. Okay, so this is the first thing you should do in developing the ground motion. You should know that the software or the model that you are developing, you should define the plastic hinges, you should do, do all the assignment, the diaphragm, everything we have done in the pushover on the previous session, you need to make it again and just define the functions uh, and time history analysis uh, and download the time history analysis from the Pacific Air Security Engineering Research Center. Or you can develop, or you can insert from the from the from uh, the software itself. But I prefer to go to the peer to download. Okay, so now you can run the analysis and you can see how much it will take time. Analyze set of cases to run. Do not run all. I need to run this. Do not run all. I need to run only this one. I need to run the, the model also. Superimpose the float light curve force. Set weight force. And so you will see how it will take time. See, this is reversible. Need to finish the five to seven, five seven three two seven points. So the incremental analysis analysis usually will take long time. So the analysis still took very long time. Finish. I will cancel here now to proceed.
done. You can go to the deform shape. Go to 3.1G and take the relative displacement here. Maximum and apply. See, this is a displacement. Until the, the analysis is not finished yet, but I stopped to see the at 0.1 gigal motion at the top right click the displacement is in the translation 0.088 meter. So multiply by 1000. Okay, 0. 0.088 times 1000 so it is 88 millimeter okay it is 88 millimeter for the first ground for the first ground motion at 0 0.1 G okay so this data you should put it for example I open Excel sheet okay so the Excel sheet will be uh, intensity measure damage measure okay at 0 0.1 G get 88 mm And you should you should see it's still in the life safety zone. It's still in the immediate frequency zone. So immediate frequency and B and life safety zone still safe at zero point one G. So you need to unlock again. Unlock. Define. Go back to the cases. Continue. Make it zero point two G. So we have the point two G in the name the point two G. Okay, analyze so this is the one not sure. Okay, right. So again you need to run for zero point two G and you'll get the value. So this is also the so details the computation will take time so we cancel this so now it's zero point zero six seven sixty seven millimeter because I cancel it should be more I put sixty seven millimeter okay so it's so on. Maybe here will be 0 0.3, and here will be 100, 0 0.4, and 70, and etc. So you draw a relation between the intensity measure and the ground motion. Okay.
is equal to x and y. So this is x, or this and this is y. So, so I will show you an example of the incremental dynamic analysis curve from the papers. Yeah, see, this is the incremental dynamic analysis curve. This is the interstore drift, which is the damage measure. And this is the PGA from 0.1G until 1.5G. So this is the curve. This is the curve. Okay. So for each gram motion, for each gram motion, this is for a gram motion frame, right? For each gram motion, you should do the same, the same way. So you, this one for gram motion. Let's say this is gram motion four. This one for gram motion. Okay. So this is. Minimum three ground motions. So we have the three ground motions. We call this intensity incrementally increasing the scale factor, incrementing the scale factor, incrementally increasing the scale factor here, and getting the values for the ground motions, each ground motion alone, and draw a relation between the intensity measure and finally we get the mean. This is the, the mean, right? This is the mean. The mean for the intensity measure. If, for, for example, I take this mean, I will change the values. This is the Q, this is the Q, this is the MQ8, this is the MQ, this is the MQ6, MQ4, MQ6, MQ8. So, this is the ground motion. You should take average okay this okay so you take the average okay okay so this is the average of the intensity measure so this is the mean ita curve mean ita this is ground motion 3 IDA. So each ground motion has IDA curve, okay? And finally, you get the mean IDA curve for the minimum of three ground motions. And the assessment would be based on these values, okay? The assessment would be based on these values. So this is the way how to develop the in IDA curve and how you insert the ground motions to the software and how to extract the software and you can continue. Okay, I will show you another method. Another method, uh, maybe it will be faster, but the plastic hinges will not appear. Okay, fine. In those cases, 3.2G. I can change this to modeling. Okay. See the difference. The model means it will say fast nonlinear analysis. You can see here nonlinear time model time history. F and A means fast nonlinear analysis. This will be faster. Okay, analyze. Set load case to run and run now. You will see how the analysis is finished. You see, very fast. Okay. We go to the display to the displacement for 0.2 G. Uh, take the maximum, apply. You see here 6.35 meter. This is it's very big, and this is finished because it's already finished. I don't prefer to use this because you can see no plastic hinges, and the model integration is more exact than this. So this is for sub 2000. So I need to go to e tabs now. You go back to our mo our recent model.
copy our response but the same same I will unlock this one same as the previous in the fine fine functions add a new function browse the same thing same same but okay the same thing browse a new file go to the file lower cases add a new case changes to nonlinear time history changes to nonlinear uh, to nonlinear dark integration or nonlinear models of an A and add the add the, add the changes to acceleration and x direction y direction the direction and uh, define functions here and the scale factor same as the previous sessions so this is for today this is for etabs and this is for and this one for sub 2000 and and don't forget to go to to search for papers understand the concept how to to develop the ada curve this is a, one of the sample of the curve to develop the ada curve so and this is this paper will help you also to read the review about the seismic planet assistant methodologies and the non dynamic as a non-static analysis this is the peer ground motions this is a database you can download the earthquakes so and and don't forget when you do not develop the incremental access you should have minimum three ground motion or seven Okay, you should consider the intensity measure is a PGA and the damage measure is a displacement or any damage measure that you would like to show to us and develop the mean IDA, mean IDA curve and, and based on this you get the assessments. Okay, so thank you so much for listening and have a nice day. Goodbye.